up? This is Ross. I'm in Cuba. Now Cuba has been on my bucket list since forever. It all started from growing up with my brother's obsession with communism and Che Guevara and my love for traveling to parts unknown. Now millions of visitors come to Cuba each year but most of them hardly ever leave Havana. There's so much more to Cuba than the city of Havana so I'm gonna spend my next 12 days just going around. Before coming to Cuba, I learned that there are two kinds of currencies used here in Cuba. First, the Cuban pesos convertible, which is what we'll get when we exchange money as a tourist, and Cuban pesos. Cuban pesos is what the locals use, but don't worry about that because you only need to use Cook, which is Cuban pesos convertible. Here's one way to kind of differentiate between the two. Cuban pesos convertible or Cook only have monuments of heroes of Cuba, whereas Cuban pesos, the local currency, only has faces of Cuban heroes. So this is so that you'll never get mixed up if you ever change money and you'll never get cheated. So I'm going to be sort of on a digital detox for the next two weeks. I'm not sure where the Wi-Fi zones are. It's um, pretty exciting. I don't know what to expect. But I'm in Cuba! Oh my god, I cannot believe this! I'm pretty sure my brother is so jealous of me right now. I'm gonna make the most of it and I'll update you as I go along. I am finally making my way to Trinidad, the first stop of my Cuban adventure. It takes about three hours to get there and I've got my own car, so yes! 20 minutes into my journey, the driver decides to pull up in the middle of the highway and to check my name, he says, are you Lee? Miss Lee? I'm like, yeah. Okay, give me a moment. And then he got out of the car. I don't know what's going on, I don't speak Spanish. I guess when you travel, you kind of put a lot of faith and trust into complete strangers to take you from one point to another and this is such a situation right now. I feel very vulnerable, anything can happen, but I'm gonna trust. I finally arrived at my casa in Trinidad! Hey, welcome! Check this out. This place is an art home. So the owner, Carlos, is a huge collector of all antiques and he loves music. Look at that! Oh my god, old school radio! And guys, there is a jukebox. Wow! Oh my god, I love this house. My host family. Hey. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> and Carlos, who's filling out my passport right now. <laughs> I just made them a try Kaya. Oh, no. Do you like it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. This is the family kitchen. I got a really strong drink as a welcome drink. I'm a bit drunk right now. Having lunch here at Trinidad, everything is so quaint and beautiful. This is a restored home turned restaurant and I'm the only one here. Getting connected to the internet is pretty tough, sometimes almost impossible here in Cuba. And that is because the internet lines are pretty much state owned and it's only one of them. However, you can buy Wi-Fi cards um, in denominations of 1, 3 and 5 hours. And these you can use to log on at Wi-Fi hotspots around the country. Now of course there are more in Havana, but now I'm in Trinidad and it seems like the hotspot is right here at Plaza de la Musica. Everyone's looking down on their phones trying to connect to the whole world. Social media, you name it. I'm gonna log on too. Kanchanchala guys, it's 10.45 in the morning and I'm <laughs> drinking something really strong. It's okay. <laughs> we live here in Cuba, so we must start drinking really early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's too warm, so we'll just do it. I hope this will be Wow, it's really good. It's got honey, white rum, soda water. Yeah, which and lemon. And lemon. Sparkling water. Cheers. And sparkling water. Not like it makes a difference because like it's yeah. primarily uh, rum. So this is how you can get drunk because you don't taste the alcohol at all. It's really like sweet. That. But I know a lot went in. Honey. A lot of white rum. Mm. So this is um, a sign of communism right here. Everyone gets rations. This is one of the shops. This is the ration shop every bar you have here in Cuba. On the first page, can you see there is like a stamp? It means the area you come from. Just in case you belong to this area, you must come to this shop. You cannot go to another one. There is like a big difference taking from the age. For example, children uh, between zero and two years old, they get some stuff, I mean baby stuff, like milk or something like that. Between 14 and 64 is like a normal ration. And um, past 65 is like a retired people, Russia. All right, so I'm doing a tour around Trinidad City right now, outside of the touristic area. The roads already feel very good because in the touristic area, everything's all cobblestones, and now it's smooth asphalt. 
One of the things to do in Trinidad is to climb up the bell tower for unobstructed views of the city. Okay, it's quite a workout, but I promise you it's worth the climb. Look at that. So I'm back at this very quaint cafe, it's called La Fortuna. It's clearly a fortune to be in here because like dollar bills from all over the world line the ceiling of this really quirky bar. It kind of makes me feel like I should put a Singapore dollar bill. Ooh. Hello Yusuf Ishak, you're in Cuba. There's nothing to write home about Cuban food but the drinks are Amazing. Doing a horse ride around the uh, town of Benales today. It's a beautiful morning. We're just uh, riding through sugarcane plantations and tobacco fields, surrounded by mountains and open spaces. I'm loving this town of Benales. It's really quaint. You definitely can feel the tourist, but still hasn't lost its charm. So definitely recommend a stopover. Peeling, binder, and wrapper. Everything is made by hand. By hand. Made a filling we put inside the binder. And here we give the side, small and big, so it depends. Was this honey? It is honey. We smoke with honey, coffee, rum. I'm gonna be trying my first cigar try ever. Uh, <laughs> Need to remember not to suck it in. Also, you inhale a little bit. No, no, because it's very big. Oh my god, it's really light. I think the honey, I'm tasting the honey. <laughs> it doesn't get more authentic than this. Smoking a Cuban cigar in a tobacco farm lit by the farmer who farmed this. So I'm here at a restored former coffee plantation by the French when they occupied this place back in the 1800s. In 1802 to 1850, this whole area was concrete and it was used to dry coffee and it was the slaves. There was slavery at that point of time that turned around the coffee beans to dry for up to a month in the sun. I'm looking down at one of the slave quarters. Three meters by three meters. Each of these quarters fit 12 slaves. Like how on earth? Hola from the Biosphere Reserve of Las Terrazas. This is uh, my last stop before I make it to Havana and this is such a beautiful place. This entire thing is a protected reserve with uh, lots of flora and fauna. So we're just going around, you know, the main areas, checking out art studios. This is one of them. I just love how Las Terrazas is just home to so many artists. So I'm here in the studio of the artist. His name is Ariel. I made a mistake of calling him a mermaid. It's amazing because like paper, there was a paper shortage in the 1990s during the economic crisis. So Ariel has decided to like use the environment, you know, recycle and all that. This is taken from all the unwanted paper, soaks them in water until they get all pulpish. And then that's a machine it made himself to grind out everything. And this is where the paper is sifted out using these screens. And then it's kind of laid out onto sheets of cloth. And then once it's all laid out, it's pressed using this metal press. I make it sound so easy, but it's really not quite. So it's just hanging out at the top to dry. And when it's completely dry, you can easily peel it off. And this is just hanging right below laundry. Look at all this paper that he has made. It's amazing. Just exploring the quiet town of Las Terrazas. There's about 1,014 inhabitants here. 80% work in tourism, and the others work to maintain the forest. The amount of uh, bedrooms depends on how big families are. They are not the owners of the houses. They can pass the house from generation to generation, but they cannot sell. So the houses belong to the government? The houses belong to the park, yeah, and the park belongs to the government. It's a state-run project. Oh wow, this sounds very much like Singapore. Our houses do not belong to us, it belongs to the government, but we pay for it. Well, <laughs> we people, rent it from them. <laughs> well, these people don't pay for the rent. Oh. They just pay for the electricity, the drinking water, yep. like everywhere else, but no, for the, not for the rent. We got it wrong, guys. <laughs> we should not be paying for the houses. We should just be paying for our PUB bill. <laughs> and someone says communism is bad again? Hello? So there are two flights of stairs here. On the left are the normal flights of stairs that we are accustomed to. And on the right, oh, hello, doggy. On the right are stairs for salsa dancers and drunkards. 
<laughs> They're both the same steepness, same heights, but apparently the ones on the right are easier to climb. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> they are easier to climb. <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. Here at the home of Lester Campa, one of Cuba's top nine artists, he's got a pretty iconic painting that mashed up John Lennon and Che Guevara. I'm gonna check it out now. Hello! <laughs> I put the lights on. Wow! Wow, I can smell it. So beautiful. Walk around, have a look. Look at your look at your studio. Inside, oh, so beautiful. This is my greatest legend. Which one, Che or John? John Lennon is my legend, but yeah. he's dressed in the icon of Che Guevara, which was a dreamer also. Okay, so, so John Guevara. Yeah, John is my number one. Oh my god, and the Pope even got one copy of this. Huh? Fidel! Yes! Wow, look at you. How old are you? Yeah, <laughs> Later. Oh, how, no, how old are you? No way! Get out. I work hmm. all through memory. Wow. I've been training my memory to work without camera. Wow. I can be isolated in a room without glasses or windows and I can do lots of work and images without pictures. Wow. So we're here at the farmer's house. Oh, there's always music. This is the restaurant usually hosts all these tourists that come in and the view though Oh, I'm gonna miss this All right entering the kitchen of uh, Casa del Campesino right now, and it's amazing. They're really cooking by wood fire. Look at this stove Pounding you want to be at the receiving end of this one oh, this Bubbling cauldron of awesome Standing right here at Revolution Square, that's Che Guevara behind me. Now this was the square where Cubans used to gather to listen to Fidel Castro give a speech three times a year and his speech would be three and a half hours long. And this is where the Rolling Stones performed when they came to Cuba. Saru Soba with Kagiyage at a Japanese restaurant in Cuba and it's pretty legit. I took a gamble because I cannot stand not having soy sauce. It's been almost a month on the road in Latin America. And when I googled this Japanese restaurant, I decided to give it a shot because it's run by a Japanese lady who's apparently a restaurateur in Osaka. She's pretty anal about keeping Japanese food authentic. So. This is cold zaru soba and with deep fried kagiyake. Oh my god, vegetables, thank goodness. On point. Mm. Thank you. So I'm here now at a very special park that the locals frequent and I'm sitting next to a bronze statue of John Lennon except that something's missing. You see, because there was a huge Beatles mania here so people have been stealing his iconic round glasses and now there's this guy that pretty much guards the park and puts on the glasses every single day so no one would steal it and this guy is here. Look at that! Imagine! All the people that get to enjoy John Lennon in his most iconic state. <laughs> I'm on the plane, ready to hop to my next destination. A bit sad about having to leave Cuba after spending two solid weeks here. Independent travel throughout Cuba is very raw, challenging, but very refreshing. I would recommend at least two weeks here. There's just so much to explore. I really feel like I just scraped the surface. My favorite stopover has got to be Benales. Oh, Benales is a beautiful town. I think the best way to navigate around Havana is to book a photography tour with a local photographer. I did that and he took me to all the hidden parts of Havana. I visited a boxing gym and even went to a home of a local Cuban and that was pretty insightful. Beyond all the classic cars and colonial architecture, Cuba is really about the people. I don't think in all my travels I've encountered people with more spirit more resilient, with a better sense of approaching life with joy, vibrancy, determination, courage than I have with the Cuban people. Regardless of how they view their country politically, Cubans are super damn proud to be Cubans. There is no division among them 
all I saw was community spirit, a damn strong sense of community spirit. You know, I left a piece of my heart here, so I'll definitely be back. But for now though, it's onward to Mexico. If you want to check out my photos in Cuba, follow my hashtag on Instagram, Roz in Cuba. Um, of course, you can follow me on Instagram too if you like, at HeyBoz. Don't forget to hit subscribe. If you want to watch our videos before they hit YouTube, download the Click Network app. I'm Ross. Bye.